Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this session, we will learn about the structure and the components of a DBMS. We know that the database is responsible for storing huge amount of data and is capable of handling multiple requests from multiple users simultaneously. And that's why it is very necessary that the whole arrangement should be proper. It can be compared to the, to the brain and the sophistication of a brain where it is responsible for specific tasks. Each part of a database is responsible for certain tasks. You have applications, you have end users, you have DDL, you have DML compiler, query compiler, store data manager and other things. All these things we will see in the coming slides. Applications. It can be considered as a user friendly UI just like a web page where the user enters the request and here one simply enters the details that he or she needs and press the buttons to get the data. End user. They are the real users of the database. They can be developer, designers, administrator or the actual users of the database. Next is DDL or data definition language which is a query fire to create a database schema tables, mapping, etc. in the database. These are the command used to create objects like tables, index in the database for the first time. In other words, they create structure of the database. Next is DDL compiler or data definition language compiler. This part of database is responsible for processing the DDL commands. That means these compiler actually break down the command into machine understandable codes. It is also responsible for storing the metadata information like table name, space used by it, number of columns in it, and mapping information and etc. Next in our list is DML compiler. When the users insert, deletes, updates or retrieves the record from database, the user will send the request which he understand by pressing some buttons. But for database to work understand the request, it should be broken down to object code. This is done by this compiler. One can imagine this when a person is asked some question, how this is broken down into waves to reach the brain. Next is query optimizer. When users fire some request, they are least bothered about how it will be fired on the database. They are not all aware of the database and the way of its performance. But whatever be the request, it should be efficient enough to fetch, insert, update or delete the data from the database. The query optimizers decide the best way to execute the user request which is received from DML compiler. Next in our list is stored data manager. This is also known as database control system. It is one of the main central system of the database. It is responsible for various tasks. It converts the requests received from the query optimizer to machine understandable form. It makes the actual request inside the database. It is like fetching the exact part of the query and giving it to answer. It helps to maintain consistency and integrity by applying the constraints. That means it does not allow inserting, updating or deleting any data if it has any child entry into it. Similarly, it does not allow entering any duplicate value in the database tables. It controls concurrent access. That means if there is multiple user environment that is accessing the database at the same time, it makes sure that all of them see correct data and guarantees that there is no data loss or data mismatch that happens between the transaction of the multiple users. The last is that it helps to back up the database and recover data whenever required. Since it is huge database and the companies have huge data that they dump every day and when there is any unexpected failure or crash of transaction, the reverting is very necessary. Next is data files. It has the real data stored into it. It can be stored as magnetic tapes, magnetic disks or optical disks. Then compile DML. 
Some of the processed DML statements such as insert, update, delete, they are stored in so that there is a similar request it will be used. Next is data dictionary. It contains all the information about database. As the name suggests, it is the dictionary of all the data items. It contains the description of tables, views, materialized views, constraints, indexes, triggers, etc. And this is very helpful when you are a designer or a developer. About the components of a DBMS. Organizations produce and gather data as they operate. Contained in a database, data is typically organized to model that is relevant and aspects of reality in a way that it supports processes requiring this information. Knowing how this can be managed effectively is vital to any organizations. Database management system have several components, each performing a very significant task in the database management system environment. Below is a list of components within the database environment. First is the software, then is the hardware, then the data itself, then there are procedures, then database access language. Let's see these components one by one. The main component of a DBMS is the software. It is the set of programs that is used to handle the database and control and manage the overall comprised database. This is the set of programs used to control and manage the overall database. This is the set of program that is used by developers or designers and other people, those who interact with the database. Let us see the following points here. DBMS software itself is the most important software component in overall system. Operating system including network software being used in the network to share the data of database among multiple users. Application programs developed in programming language such as C++, Visual Basics that are used to access database in database management system. Each program contains statements that request database management system to perform operation on a database. The operation may include retrieving, updating, deleting, and other things. The application program may be conventional for or an online workstation or terminals that can be accessed through a smartphone as well. Next in our list is hardware. Hardware consists of the set of physical electronic devices such as computers together with associated input output device like disk drives, storage device, input output channels, electromechanical devices that make interface between computer and the real world system and so on. It is impossible to implement DBMS without hardware devices. Even the cloud system they have DBMS at their own locations. In a network, a powerful computer with high data processing speed and a storage device with large storage capacity is required as a database server. Hardware cost can be high depending upon the configuration and also the maintenance cost is also high. The main purpose of DBMS is to protest data. And that's why we have in our list next as data. The data is most important component of a DBMS. The main purpose of any database management system is to process and handle the data in an appropriate way. In database management system, databases are defined, constructed and then data is stored, updated and retrieved to and from the database. The database contains the actual or the operational data and the metadata, data about the data. Generally database contains two files. First is LDF and MDF, but these can vary depending upon the database management systems. Let us see about the interaction of these components within a database system. The user requests a specific information with the help of user interface. This request is processed by the database manager and after processing database manager request for specific records to the file manager. The file manager then requests for the specific block to the disk manager. The disk manager then retrieves the block and sends it to file manager which sends the required record to the database manager. 
the transaction manager supervises the data transaction that is carried out between data manager, file manager and the disk. The recovery manager keeps a check on the transacted data so that in case of system failure the data can be protected and can be recovered. Let us see about the users type in a database management system. There are end users, administrators and developers and designers. Administrators Administrators maintain the database management system and are responsible for administrating the database. They are responsible to look after its usage and by whom it should be used. They create access profiles for users and apply limitation to maintain isolation and force security. Administrator also look after database management system resources like system license, required tools and other software and hardware related maintenance. Next is designers and developers. The designers and the developers are the group of people who actually work on the designing part of a database. They keep a close watch on what data should be kept and how the design has to be done. They identify and design the whole set of entities, relations, constraints and views in a database management system. Then we have end users. End users are those who are actually the basic users of a database who have the benefit of using the database management system. End user can range from simple viewers who pay attention to the log or have a certain transaction that they fire in a database management to day to day basis. Let's see about application programmers. They are the developers who interact with database by means of DML queries. These DML queries are written in application programs like C, C++, Java, Pascal, etc. These queries are converted into object code to communicate with database. For example, writing a C program to generate the report of employees who are working in a particular department will involve a query to fetch the data from the database. It will include an embedded SQL query in the C program. Next is complex or sophisticated user. They are database developers who write SQL queries to select, insert, delete, update data. They do not use any application or program to request the database, but they directly interact with the database by the means of query language like SQL. These users will be engineers and analysts working in a company. Those who study SQL and DBMS and apply the concepts in their requirement. Also, there are some specialized users. These are also complex or sophisticated users, but they write special database application or programs. Next is standalone users. These users will have a standalone database for their personal use. These kind of database will have ready-made database packages which will have menus and graphical interfaces. Last in our list is native user. These are the most basic user, generally end user of an organization who use the existing application to interact with the database. For example, online library system, ticket booking system, ATMs, etc which will have existing application and users to use them to interact with the database to fulfill their own requests. In the next section we will understand about